Tick tock, tick tock. And we are not talking about the social media platform. The Arsenal transfer clock continues to tick. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? The Highbury squad are, and we go live right now. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone. Before we get started this evening, I would love to thank Ruth Beck, for allowing us to use her wonderful art. This is, as you know, an iconic image of the clock end. Uh, Ruth is very generous, by the way, and has given the squaddies a lifetime deal um, to get 20% off all of her art. We do not get paid for this. Ruth is doing it out the generosity of her heart. Use code Hybrid Squad. Go to her Etsy store. The link is in the description of this show. Iconic stuff um, from the Highbury days. From the oh, Islington. look at that! Kev. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, roof! Oh, yes. Let me bring Super Kevin, and I'll show a few more oh, before we get started. Oh, yes, Super Kevin brilliant. Campbell. Squaddies, love your loads. We do, we do, at ease, and let's get stuck into some of this art. Bam. <laughs> so, Kev, uh, Ruth, as you know, she's been on the show. She was on one of our Talented Gooners episodes. Love this, Kev. This, look at that. That end. The, uh, up, you see the top where the, the yep. gap is? In that yep. gap, that's, my, that's where I came up to the top of my first game in 77. So. And look, Kev, the entrance. Oh, man. Jeez. I love it. I, I mean, I, I came in the other side. But yeah, the, wow, the in turnstiles, um, iconic at, at, at Arsenal. That, isn't it? Yep, yeah. I love this one a lot. This one's great. Yeah. Um, got the East Stand. Uh, you know, just great stuff. Go check it out. You guys won't regret it. Of course, this this is very um, special in our hearts. Uh, the Tube Station, iconic, and also we pay homage to that in our branding. And the Invincibles hanging up in the dressing room, but whose oh. shirts will be hanging up in the dressing room come the end of this month? Super Kevin Campbell. <laughs> Everyone's losing it. Everyone's losing it just a little bit. And then there are those, Kev, who are like, what are you guys surprised about? This is what I was expecting. It's four days now. Monday is the deadline. Um, good mm. evening to all the usual suspects in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. So, hey, Kevin, Rich. Was... Welcome back, Rich. Um, there was talk about Vlavic. The Artur deal has fallen through. Uh, Bruno um, now looks like he's Newcastle bound. Alexander Isaac. Uh, we've let Maitland-Niles go. We let Kalasinac go. We let Pablo Mari go. Callum Chambers, uh, his magic mic here tonight, is gone. Um, of course, we know about the suspects that we're not going to talk about because, you know, they're long gone. Torreira, Genduzzi, uh, Mavro Banos, um, you know, those those players that have been gone a while now. Uh, now there's talk about Douglas Luiz from Aston Villa, the Brazilian. You've got Ruben Neves back in, in the books. Um Apparently, Roma are looking to come back in for Granite Xhaka. Kev, you warned everyone. You did it on Kevin Says. You said, as much as you defend Arsenal and you love the club and you have been very supportive of Mikel Arteta, there is some incompetence here, is there not? Yeah, it's, it's difficult sometimes to call it incompetence because... the. The timing seems to be all wrong, Solf. Unfortunately, it does. It seems to be all wrong. And it's difficult to get the timing right, especially when you haven't got a full squad. We have been struggling. These are players. The players, some of the players we've, you, we've let go are players who we wanted out anyway, Solf. Our issue is we're not bringing in 
the bodies to compliment them. So they've got to be doing some business. So they have got to be doing some business. That's for sure. They've got what, to. What do you say, Kev, to the, you know, um, I think uh, Dan did a tweet and there's some truth to it in that first week, no one signed. Arsenal fans say, don't panic. Second week, no one signs. Everyone says, don't panic. Third week in, no one signed. There's still time. But now, hence our title of the show today, Tick Tock, Tick Tock. Sorry, Kevin, if I'm making you feel ill, but these are facts. Look who Newcastle have brought in. Look at Aston Villa. You know, look at uh, some, some other teams. I know it's been a slow January transfer window for the big clubs, but my goodness, Kev, the hits and misses. And did they put all of their eggs in the uh, Dusan shopping basket? No, it, 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 again, people think it's 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 one of them. Do you put all the eggs? You you always have plan A, plan B, and plan C for transfers. You have to because not it's not it's nothing set in stone that you're gonna get anyone over the line. So nothing is set in stone. Our issue, our issue is, and and probably something that would appease the fans. You still want bodies to be coming in. So at the end of the day, the negotiating team, there's only what there's not there's not three negotiating teams, Sophie. There's one. So you you got to concentrate on the main deal, which was Vlaovic. But there'd be talks going on with the people in the background. But if that one falls over, then obviously then you've got to get moving on what you think is the plan B and plan C. But again, it's timing, so here we are, few days to go left of the a transfer window, and it seems as though we're scurrying around, and it's not a good look. Do you think that there has been part of the description in, in the show I wrote today was in the summer it felt like we had a plan. It felt like we were calculated. This is the player profile we're going after. This is what we're looking for. This is the budget that we're, you know, going to be willing to spend. And these are the positions. And it seems like Adu's gone back on his word, Kev, in that Sky Sports interview. He said, we wanted to start with youth. We wanted to build around young players. And he vowed and said the next phase would be to attract world-class play players. And I've always said on the show, how can you attract world-class players without being able to offer European football? Now, that's not right. Players should want to come to play for the Arsenal. It's still an attractive proposition, no matter what anyone might think about the fact that we're not as competitive in the Premier League. We're still a prestige club to play for. You'll get treated right. <laughs> you you could tell everyone how you get treated at the Arsenal, the luxury that you um, the feel on an every single day uh, as a player. So you're the best, Sof. Kev, has the it feels it feels like I, I I have to disagree with you there, Sof. Okay, tell me why. Well, you talk about a world class player. Vlaovic is a world class player, but going Please. for him, but going for him doesn't mean you're going to get him. Let's let's talk straight. Everybody you go for. That don't mean you're going to sign everybody. Arta's a quality player. That doesn't mean you're going to get him because at the other end is a Juventus. And I've said this to you before, and I'll say it to the squad. He's again, Sophie. Sometimes there's other clubs, they have a different agenda. Some of them don't want to do business with Arsenal. I tell you that much. Some of them don't want to. So... Well, that's because we've been a little negligent. And also, I think that clubs have taken advantage of us. And currently, we may have a hierarchy that aren't willing, you know, to be fleeced. But let's be honest, we've let Mavrobanos go for pe peanuts. We could have capitalized on Chambers at a higher price, maybe two or three seasons ago. Um, Granite Xhaka, after having the greatest uh, football season um, tournament of his life, uh, couldn't even couldn't even squeeze 15 million, wouldn't accept 12 million. We have Saliba on loan for three years, who cost us 27 million. We let Ozil go for free. We let Sogradis go. We let um, uh, Kalasinac go. 
we've mismanaged this. And some of this has to do with our pedigree and history in the transfer market, Kevin. It's going to take a while for us to get back to being more respected. But we also spent $72 million on Nicola Pepe, which at this point is looking like a bad investment, not a total waste of money, because no matter what people say about Pepe, no, he hasn't become that world-class beater that we were all expecting at the Arsenal. He has contributed and was a huge part of our FA Cup win um, in the half Emery, half Arteta season, Kev. But you, there are so many misses. All, look, Pablo Mari's gone now as well. You know, I mean, it's... Thin. Maitland Niles is, is gone Ma on loan. And, and I just want to read this out from Raid and have you address it. Sophie, what do you have against what Arteta said? We sign only someone who improves us. Why do you think that's wrong? You want the team to sign a, a William, Kalasinac, Chambers, etc. again? No, I don't. But there are a lot of players out there, Raid, who can improve us, who can make the Arsenal better. I would argue, okay, that there are players who we are a bit snobby about that we've whiffed on that Kev and I have talked about ad nauseum on this show. Kev, what, what's your thoughts on that? Improve us? Yes, of course. But sometimes I was listening to Darren Lewis uh, just before I came on, very good friend of yours and a good friend of our show, talking about um, they're doing a show on TalkSport with Hugh Wisencroft and Anton Ferdinand about the transfer market and they're going through every single team. And he mentioned uh, Abu Bakr, mm -hmm. who's banging in the goals at AFCON, Kev. He's 30 years old. He's played in Europe. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? For five months, I would, I would bring in a player like that to just bang in some goals. I'm not saying he's the answer, but I think beggars can't be choosers. We need, and we need some experience up there. We need somebody up there, don't we? That's what you're saying. Yes. And we have, we've said it quite a few times. But again, uh, as a, they've obviously got somebody in mind, Sophie. They've obviously got someone in mind who they want to bring in. So if it's not Abu, uh, Abu Bakr or whatever, they've got somebody in mind. But they've got to get it over the line. What we're not, do what we're not doing on here is pulling the trigger too early, because we still have time. But as you say, tick tock, tick tock. We, we really have to, it, the, the key is these last few days, so we've got to get stuff over the line. And that's why I think Mikel Arteta went out to see Stan. Okay, so we're going to get into that before Crusader. Keeping Deadwood, people go mad. Selling Deadwood, people go mad. <laughs> Not on this show. We're just saying we have credited, Kevin and I actually said that last January was one of our best ever transfer windows getting rid of the cancer in the dressing room, cleaning, start start to clean um, the slate, House. bring out the broom, you know, get rid of the clicks. It was brilliant. That was the beginning. Something that Emery unfortunately couldn't do, never had the real power to do it because mm. unfortunately those players had the power. Mm. And now with a new hierarchy, Arteta has the power to do that, right? So we are all for the players going out. But my goodness, you better have a plan to bring players in. So, so Kev? Listen, we're going to get onto it, I'm sure, in a bit. What Mikel Arteta would have said to the owner. Let's get into it right now, because that was a big move for him to go to the United States. Some people think it was a planned trip. Some people think it was an impromptu trip. Some I people think it felt... was planned. I think okay. it was planned because... If you're Mikel Arteta, you're going to go, all right, Stan, you brought me in. Now what? Come on, mate. you got to back me now. What's, what's going on? He's got to say that. Because at the end of the day, Sophie, this is a massive opportunity for us to make the top four. If we get the right players in, we've got a huge opportunity to make the top four. If we don't bring the players in, Sophie, that then becomes it's like a it's like a triple Rubik cube. It's it won't happen. Yeah, I'm putting all of your comments up. I would love to know what you guys think um, about. Let's say it's the picture of our. I don't have it here, but the picture of Arteta watching the game and stand standing there. 
What's the caption? What do you guys think Arteta said to Stan? Yeah. I mean, that would be with, good to know. That, that would be good to know. And, and Kev, was he there to talk about his new deal, his extension? Well, this is what I'm saying. You've brought me in. So you could have to back, you could have you have to back me. You have to back me. So but, here but we Kev, are, four days and nobody's in. Karen says open the purse, Stanley. Yeah. That's that's not that's not backing the manager, is it? LT says French fries are bueno. <laughs> <laughs> Mark says, who invited Lego head? Come oh, on. <laughs> um, I think too, I think he was there more for the deal, K Marlon, than he was there for transfers. Cliff, he asked Stan if he would like extra starch in his shirts. You see how people don't take it seriously, Kev? Well, but of course we're joking too, and it's fun. No, to there's joke, there's but... a there's a reason why people take don't take it serious. Because Sophie, we haven't been that club. We haven't been that club, Sophie. We haven't been that club. I'm going to ask you. Serious. I'm going to ask you a question that Crusader has just made a comment on. It's made a cup one dodgy one, one good one here, Crusader. Um, was this the goal all along for January, Kev? No, I don't think so. No, definitely you don't? not. No, I don't think anybody, if, especially if you're a manager, I don't think any manager wants to be working with one hand behind his back. No chance. No chance. The manager would like all the shelves stocked. Thank you very much. So we can pick and choose the best, the best teams. That's what he wants. Whether he gets it or not is the, is the issue. And right now, Sophie, right now, look at us. We're in a worse position. So it, n nobody's going to plan that, Soph, to be in this position. What, Something's going on. Something might be, but also... No, it better be, So, <laughs> No, it better be going on. Could you imagine what's going to happen if, if this is it? Oh, there'll be a meltdown. It's going to be there'll horrible. Be, there's going to be madness. It's not, then it will get to real toxic. Maybe the show will go dark next week. No, <laughs> we won't. Wait. Hold on. I could put the hood up. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Let me put the hood up. So some, some Jedi business, you know what I mean? Some Jedi business. Trust me, we can't afford that. So oh, I do have a lightsaber somewhere in my garage. Oh, um, you've got a samurai. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Back there. I changed the angle a bit today, Kev, in the hope that, you know, doing a little feng shui would bring in a little action. A different energy. Different energy. And energy in the transfer market. This is how sad and pathetic I am as an Arsenal <laughs> fan, everybody, <laughs> just in case you You're not sad wondering. and pathetic, so Come on. You're not sad and pathetic. Um, Tom says, <laughs> stand to... <laughs> Oh, jeez. I'll tell you, Stan. The Tom. Stan to our oh. oh. Okay. KC, uh, GD wants KC to use the, fo the force. Yeah, um, use the force. Greeny Man. Greeny Man TV. <laughs> but you, you, do you know what, Sophie? Greeny Man TV, you, you're not far off, you know. Yeah. I'm telling you, you are not far off. Frank Ayala, you're not far off either. It's madness. I'm, Bearded Guna made a, um, a suggestion in a WhatsApp group we're in. And let me just say, I'm not going to suggest it live on our show, Kev, because <laughs> it's probably a really bad idea. But let's just say if the fans did do it, it could be exceptionally epic to see um, that happen. Arteta is Stan's puppet. He's not making demands. No, he's still asking the question, though, Newman. Don't have to make demands. You still got to ask the question. No manager want no manager wants to be working snookered or with one hand behind his back. No manager wants that. He'll always want the always want the best squad possible in front of him. 
Matty K says, let's just calm down. Yeah, we're listen, we're saying is the the title of the show, Matty K, is TikTok. The it's it's ticking. We got four days. And it seems the only deal that's come through, and there is good news. If Magic was here, we'd ring the bell. We have signed a player, and his name is Matt Turner. Now, I know this may not be sexy to a lot of you guys, but if Leno is going out and we need a more experienced backup to the keepers that we already have at the Arsenal, uh, I'm going to tell you that Matt Turner is a really good player. And actually, if you have time tonight, I know that there's so many Mm. of you that live in different time zones, but a four o'clock Pacific time here in the United States, which would be midnight, in the UK, the US men's national team have an, a World Cup qualifier against El Salvador, El Salvador, and Matt Turner could well be starting in that game. Um, I'm not sure who's starting. It will be him or Zach Stefan, who is the backup goalkeeper to um, Edison Epson. at Manchester City. Now, he is a brilliant shot stopper, Kev. That is his strength. He's very good. Uh, he's decent with the ball at his feet and passing mm-hmm. it out the back, but I think that's something that Arteta will work with him within the system and the style that he wants to play. Um, Taylor Twelman, who is an ESPN correspondent here in the United States, started reporting that it looks like the deal will be going through and that Matt Turner will be arriving at the Arsenal this summer. He kept Zach Steffen, albeit Zach Steffen has commitments to Manchester City, Kev. So he got his chances for the team, but he did well. He won the Gold Cup with the United States, which is the equivalent of winning the Euros. Mm -hmm. He was actually in the best 11 and he also won the Golden Glove in the Gold Cup. And remember, the US play Mexico, which is one of the best rivalries in all of world football. It is no joke. It's not friendly. Mexico have some really great players. They're a team in transition now. But, you know, these are competitive games. It's not easy playing us. It's not easy playing against Jamaica. It's not easy playing against some of these teams in CONCACAF. In fact, CONCACAF is one of the toughest um, regions to get out of to qualify for the World Cup. And the U.S. missed out on it in Russia. And that hurt them a lot. And there's been a massive transition since Jurgen Klinsmann uh, left. Uh, Greg Berhalter has now taken over. The other thing is that he's an MLS all-star. He was part of the all-star team. And I don't want to hear you guys poo-poo the league because when you have Lorenzo Insigne, who is the god in Napoli and the child of Napoli at 30 years old, is leaving Napoli to come and play for Toronto, that tells you that this league is definitely transitioning. Um, It's you can ask Steven Gerrard, who I spoke to when he was here at LA Galaxy, Kev, about how tough it is to play in this league. The time zone travel, the elevation. Ask Frank Lampard. Ask Andre- Andrea Pirlo was here for years. David Villa was here for years. As you know, Zlatan, David Beckham. It is definitely a league that is growing. Matt Turner was the goalkeeper of the year. He won the Supporters' Shield with the New England Revolution. And he is managed by Bruce Arena. Bruce Arena, to give you a comparison, if you don't know, is the Sir Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger of Major League Soccer and also, um, you know, U.S. soccer in general. He's won the MLS Cup with D.C. United. He's won it with L- twice. He's won it three times with L.A. Galaxy. He was a winning coach at the University of Virginia. He's won the Gold Cup with the United men's national team three times. He has been coached by quality, quality since Bruce has gone to New England. So this guy comes with experience. And also the other thing too, Kev, before I hand it over to you, is in the national team, he's playing and training with Zach Steffen, who is at Man City. Mm -hmm. And who who every single day, we know how the goalkeepers union is strong and Mm -hmm. together um, with Edison, managed by Pep Guardiola. He's with Christian Pulisic. He's with Weston McKennie. Juventus. He's with Serginio Dest, Barcelona. Tyler Adams, RB Leipzig, a player that the Arsenal should be looking at to sign for a midfield position. I think he would be fantastic. The US men's national team is full of talent and he's part of that. And I think this is a good signing. So always try to find the positives in a time where everyone's feeling negative because we haven't made the sexy signings. 
Let me tell you something. He will be a great addition to the team and a really good backup for Aaron Ramsdale. Kev? Yeah, listen, I just think we discussed it previous. Um, Leno, Leno wants to be a number one somewhere. And if we could if we could move him on and get somebody who will be a really good number two, someone who, if anything ever happened to Ramsdale, can come in and be the number one, who's got experience, he's... He's the man. He's definitely man. So, I think it's I think it's a good signing. I believe he's a gooner. He is a gooner as well, Sophie, which helps. And he's got experience. That's really important. He's got experience, and he'll be happy to be there. Be happy to be part of the club. I think he'll be a plus inside the club, as opposed to maybe Leno. Who, I'm not saying Leno's a bad guy because he's been a good servant for the team, but maybe his heart's not in it anymore. Although he hasn't not played well, he's played fine when he's come in. You know, I, I just, I just seriously. Um, uh, Kev, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. So now everyone's saying I'm trying to sell them hard on US soccer and Matt Turner and stuff like that. You guys. You, you're only talking you, about the, the player. Uh, That's all. You, you don't know about him. So I'm helping you understand a little bit more about him, right? Think about how people poo-pooed Tomiyasu. They poo-pooed Ramsdale. They were like, what? There are so many players that come into the league from other leagues. And I'll tell you something. The Premier League, when you go down towards the end, it's been garbage this season. The quality has been gar garbage. It is more fun watching the top 10 teams play in the championship this season than it is the Premier League. So, you know... I know it's not what you want right now, and there's still a few days left. And Curtis cracking the joke about Wilshire, he is in the UAE training with the squad, Kev. Is that going to be another meltdown moment, or is it going to be, are we just better off bringing Jack in and giving him a chance? I mean, surely we can't go back down that road, and we love Jack. So Sophie, let me just tell you something. I am not taking anything off the table right now because we are we are struggling. We are struggling, so if we don't replace some of these players, what are we going to do? And I know um, Party's back and I know Jacques will be back and all these kind of things. But depth-wise, where's the depth? You know, we need depth. So this is where I think fans, is, and Guna Russ has been vocal about this. Good evening. Welcome back to the house, uh, Russ. This is why I think fans have a right to be critical, Kev. We never endorse abuse on this show by any stretch of the imagination. But to not be prepared for this moment, this is why I asked you at the top of the show about the plan, knowing where you want to go, what you want to do. You know, yes, get rid of all the deadwood. We're building a new DNA and culture at the Arsenal. But to be left this short, because here's the scoop. I want you to answer this for me too, and uh, mm. as a player in the dressing room. The club found themselves in an improbable situation to go for fourth. Most of us never believed we'd be here. A lot of people had Arsenal finishing sixth at best. And a lot of fans were thinking, it's just going to be another eighth if we carry on like this. Mm -hmm. But here we found ourselves with the opportunity to qualify for the top four. And we have shown progress. I don't care if you're happy or not with the with the second half performances and whatever. We've gotten results in games where maybe we would ordinarily have lost. We scored 21 goals in December and have scored one goal in January. So the point that a lot of fans are making is it's now the end of January James Johnston came on the show too and said January could make or break us. You said it on Kevin Says. We got two games against Liverpool in the semi-final of the Cup. We've got a North London derby, which now has been pushed. But we've got critical games that are going to be important that we win. And we knew AFCON was coming. So even if we sign players now, Kev, have these last 27 days hurt us? Are we? Have we blown it? Have we blown the improbable chance? No, we haven't blown it yet. No, because listen, at the end of the day, as you said, we scored 20 odd goals in one month in December and we struggled in January. 
That's what we've done. We've struggled. And the same players who were on fire in December went off, went off the boil in, this, in, in January. That's a fact. Now, culminated in the mix is... We're taking some, we're not putting in some of the ingredients because we're getting rid of it. Oh, what have we got? It needs vanilla. Oh, we've got no vanilla, so, so <laughs> vanilla's gone. And we've got, what else? You've got no sugar <laughs> and you've got no milk. So what have you got? We, we're trying to make a, a, a cake here and we've got none of the, some of the ingredients to get the cake in the oven to bake it for the end of the season. We haven't got some of the ingredients. Do we need the ingredients? Of course we need the ingredients. And that's why I truly believe so. If we don't, if we don't do business, any business, by the end of this window, I'm bringing a few players. Of course they'd have been trying, but there's definitely a, a major reason why. There's a major reason why. I don't know why we haven't brought anybody in already. We need bodies, Sophie. We need bodies. Isn't it strange to think that um, Arteta thinks that Jack Wilshire is a better opportunity? And I'm not, as you guys know, I've never been a fan of Chambers. I want, I wanted him gone. I want Holding gone. I want Elneny gone. I wanted Collar gone. Uh, Mari was a waste of space. You know how I feel about Chambers, but surely in this desperate time, once again, you let Maitland-Niles go. Um, we then have two of our senior players get red cards. We've missed out on the FA Cup. We missed out on a Wembley date with Chelsea. He thinks that Jack Wilshire, who's been so injury prone and isn't getting a look in with clubs everywhere, is a better option potentially than Chambers in midfield. What, who has said that? Well, this is the no, thing. Are we, are we no, no, but who who has said that? It's only no, it's gossip. only it's only gossip saying that, Sophie. Let's be honest. Arsenal, if Arsenal want to sign Jack Wilshire, they could sign Jack Wilshire any time, Sophie, because he's he's uncontracted. Have I they just... signed him? No. So let's be real. Let's be real. It's not even a conversation to have. I think that he's there to train, of course, train, and we're being nice, train. and his ex-teammate is helping him out, of course, and the club yeah. love him. He's a Hayland boy. We should be, um, do you know, helping helping Jack out, and that does. I think it's just the fear, Kev. The fear kicks in. You know, of going backwards. Mm. Here yeah, we've taken yeah. so many steps forward, and here we are going backwards. What's your take on this, Douglas Louise? connection happening. I like him. I like Douglas tell me, Lewis. Um, tell me why. He's a, he's a Man City uh, player. He's been, went on loan, didn't he? He went on loan. I think Villa, have, I'm not sure if Villa have signed him now or whatever, but good, tenacious midfielder, can play. Um, Sof could really play, Sophie. Sits in that midfield and does his job, Sof. He gets up and down the pitch, protects the back, back, back boys. Um, Good player, Sophie. Good player. Is he is he one of them players who out he stands out every week? No, but you know what he is, Sophie? He's a steady Eddie. He's a steady Eddie who will sit in there and do the job for the team. Six, seven out of ten every week. That's the type of player we need, Sophie. Do you think Gerard's gonna let a player like that go, Kev, as they're I know that he wants to bring bodies in. Of course, he's brought in Chambers. And again, for an Aston Villa, smart. He's got Premier League experience. You know, he's, he's not been the answer for us, but we saw him do well at Fulham and he was their player of the season when in the season that they got relegated. But is he going to let a player that at this stage now? This is the other thing too. The oh, other teams oh. letting these players go. Look, Stephen Gerrard spent quite a bit of money. So what, however way you look at it, Sophie, sometimes you've got to balance the books. Sometimes you have to balance the books. And maybe, just maybe, you never know, Stephen Gerrard might not fancy him. I don't know, you know. Um, so I look, at, I look at Aston Villa and I think 
Villa are emerging. Villa are adding to their squad. They've got some, some real decent players. But, you know, which one, which one could I do without? Which one could I use to raise funds, Sophie? Maybe it's Douglas Luiz. Um, is he rash in his challenges? I don't know. I don't know well, his red how, cards. Uh, well, how many red cards has he got? Rash in his challenges? Where? It's nothing like bloody Xhaka. Jesus, peace. Nothing like Xhaka. He stays on the pitch. Would you much, much rather sign Nevers than Louise? Do you think at this point either one is a better option than what we have? What we, I'd, I'd sign either one of them, Sophie. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. I like Nevers, but I like Louise as well. I, do you know what, Sophie? Just like our, our summer situation, we sign players who come in and do the job. Just come in and do the job. I don't want the big fanfare. I don't want the big name on the back of the shirt, Sophie. We sign players who will graft for the team. That has proven to make a difference. At the top end of the pitch, do we need somebody? Of course we do, Sophie. Of course we do. But you know what? Get someone in that midfield who can really help and, and stay on the pitch. Uh, speaking of really help, Kev, we have 430 in live chat this fine Thursday, Friday junior, I like to call it, evening. You know what to do. Mm -hmm. it, do a Vinny, guys. Do a Vinny. Please, on the way in, if you didn't hit it, do it on the way out or just do it now. Just touch it, caress it, slot it in the corner, guys and girls. Go on. Or else, you know the script. You know what's going to come. Um, feel free to lob any questions here in the last 10 minutes for Kev. Um, as you know, we're back tomorrow where Kev is the one asking the questions. Um, in uh, Kevin says he's got uh, three corkers lined up for you. Um, Kev, I, I do want to touch on um, the situation with Pepe and Aubameyang with you real quick. We briefly touched on it earlier this week, but the longer time goes on, and that elusive striker becomes an issue. I think less on the Aubameyang side here, Kev, but Nicola Pepe, do you think he's going to get a chance when, when he comes back, whether or not we sign and bring in new bodies or not? Will he get a chance? He'll get a chance to come on and play at some stage. Just like before, Sophie. Pepe, as, as far as the team are concerned, got better when he wasn't in the team. Got more consistent when he wasn't in the team. And I know, Sophie, we are not nowhere near any finished article. I know that. And this Pepe multi-talented, fantastic, yes, he is. But nobody can argue that the team improved and went on the run and scored all them goals without Nicola Pepe. So great that he had a good, you know, AFCON. Let's see what he's like when he comes back. Kev, what do you think of Boy's uh, statement um, about Hayland grads as backup? I mean, the bench uh, in our last game before this break was laden with... Um, Farley's there was rust. Hay there was a Haylander and also um, a couple of young players, 17 years old to 20 years old. Kev, I know your answer to this, but let let boy know exactly what you think about that we already have a lot of young players in our starting 11 that we're relying on too much yeah it's it's not it's not great it is not great you know some of the players on there you know, of course they're very talented but they haven't got it, they haven't got the experience we we're, we're trying to we're trying to push let's be honest we're trying to push for top 4 and we need experience yet you look at our you look at our bench and it's a, it, it's like a a a, a poster for mother care. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a poster for mother care. The, there's lads on there with bottles and rusks. It's re, it's crazy, and it's not their fault, Soph. Is it's mother care still fault. around? Is it, is I'm, it? I'm sure it is somewhere. Because you know what, CNA is still around, Soph. You know no, what I mean? Wow. Yeah, CNA in Spain. CNA is there. Is that Henny's now? No. No, is CNA, that, it's, no, CNA. Wow. it's actually CNA, so, so Mother Care will be around, but you get my drift. They're just so young, Sophie. Hey, 
I'd love them to surprise us, but you know what? That'll be the biggest turn up for the books ever. And I just can't see it. We need better players and better bodies. I'm not saying a couple of them can't be on the bench. I'm all for trying to bring them in, Sophie. But we need better players, a fatter squad with experience. Right. Um, a lot of people can't see Pepe as a striker. Um, Mark Green says, Oba left AFCON early, went out clubbing, caught COVID, didn't play a game, got sent home because he went out drunk and had a fight with the security guard. Oh, yeah, just the sort of player we want to get him out. Um, Sophie, just on that, didn't, didn't, oh, did Oba have COVID before he went as well? <laughs> He's a COVID <laughs> magnet. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, Soph. Hope Paul is well. Hey, um, Soph. With you. Um, let's see. I See, I think Pepe, after having a confident AFCON, and if mm. we really need some something, he could come back and have a say, you know. You, in... you, 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 you want them to, you'd like them to chance him at number nine, wouldn't you, Soph? Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't we? Look, for some reason, and I do think when I say this loosely, don't shoot me, guys, but I'm just basing this on players we have, okay? Mm. When Xhaka comes back into the midfield with Thomas Partey, I think Udegaard will be able to play his more natural game and don't, doesn't have to, forward. Doesn't have to think forward. back and think, I've got, you know, all this stuff that he's had to do to support Sambi and the back line, right? As as well as the fact that he put the team on his shoulders to try still try and be as creative as possible. Mm. I think if there's still no goals from Saka and, you know, Mill Smith Rowe, whether he's coming off the bench or not, Lacazette and Martinelli, what was the, the beautiful thing about the immediate transition from Aubameyang to moving Lacazette back into starting, Kev, was the speed. <laughs> and it's just that Lacazette's finishing hasn't been there, even though he contributes a lot to the team. Mm -hmm. So why not try Pepe? I know you you think he'd get eaten alive by centre-backs don't you I, I just think he's um it's so it's such for me it's such because he doesn't he's, he's never been a striker Lacazette knows how to start up top and then come deep I just think there's a lot of traffic in there Sophie and you take a lot of hits in there a lot more than you do wide I, I just think he'll have a He'll have a big target on his back, Pepe, because he won't even see the hits coming, as far as I'm concerned. And you're but, not, you're not going to you sacrifice. Him. You're not going to sacrifice Saka or or Martinelli right now, are you, Kev? By no, playing because, Pepe on the right or moving Saka, interchanging the two of them. No, because I think I think they give us, especially in obviously December. They gave us not only more out, more threat, they gave us goals, they gave us assists, and they gave us work rate. Back on, up the pitch, back, up the pitch, back. And I'm not saying Pepe hasn't got the talent because I think he's exceptionally talented, Sophie. But mm -hmm. we don't see it consistently enough. We see it in patches and he has his absolute brilliant moments and then he goes off the boil. That guy should be tearing the defenders to pieces, so if I'm honest with you. And from what I'm seeing in chat, all 500 of you right now, there's a lot of support for Pepe, Kev. Like, Arsenal fans really wanted this to work. Some think he's wasteful, some think, you know, I think we both agree that sometimes he dribbles a bit too much, doesn't release the ball too early. The game has to slow down for him a little bit in the Premier League. But he has been a consistent finisher, as Dejan says. Yeah, but you that's know, from wide. That's not from... from uh, that's not for, as a... You see... The, the difference is when he's wide on the right, he's coming onto his strong foot in space. When you're in the middle, look how many bodies. You've got the two centre-halves, you've got the midfield, you've got your players. It's a, it's a different feel. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Listen, if they tried him there and he'd, he'd done great, hallelujah, he's done brilliant. But very rarely, very rarely, you see mm -hmm. wide players Go and play number nine as a one and tear it up. Very rare. 
I'm just throwing them at you because there's some interesting questions coming. Um, Goran Talis, Goran Talis um, says, why not play Pepe and Lacazette up front together? Is he talking about a 4-4-2 here, Kev? And then you're know. sacrificing... I don't, I don't know. He's the one who has to tell you because I don't know what he's talking about. True say no also idea. says, Pepe up front as part of a two will work. What do you think so about that? Playing off, off Lacazette a little bit? Are you sacrificing well, who? Martinelli or... Yeah. yeah. Again... Yeah, who do you sacrifice? Um, Kev, there's no chance that we're going to let... I can't believe this is coming out of my mouth, by the way, you guys, but there's no chance we're going to let Xhaka go to Roma this window, is there? <laughs> Sophie, I'll be honest with you. I, I, listen, Don't tell so, me you'll be happy. No, Sophie, listen. You know my thoughts, and you know my thoughts on Xhaka, but I don't think we could afford to lose any more players. Chambers is just going to look. People are talking about, why are we getting rid of a player? We're getting rid of players who we wanted to get rid of last in the summer. But the key is bringing bodies in. So it's no point getting rid of other players if we're not going to replace them. So. All right, a few a few more minutes here. Get some last minute questions in for Super Kev. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow night live with Kevin Says, where he turns the tables on you and he asks you the questions. Don't miss out on that. There's been some great shows this week. Um, Dan Potts and Lee Judges did a get off the pot seat last night, which is fun. They picked their top five favorite ever Arsenal goals. Um, we also did a trip down memory lane at the start of the week with um, Rich and Universal Greek. That was a wonderful brilliant, show. Brilliant show. And brilliant, of course, guys. we had Monday Madness at the top of the week with the always epic Josh and James from our tactical. Watch it if team. you ever watch that. I tell you, very good. Very There's a good. bit of fire in that. I tell you, I don't know who brought some fire. <laughs> maybe maybe someone in this room right now Newman has a question <laughs> no I don't love you do, 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 I, do I love you as a squaddy yes but I don't love you mate come on <laughs> love it uh, Elliot says Xhaka can leave now seriously we wouldn't miss him um, let's see. Samuel says 15 games left. I think the squad is good enough, even if we don't bring anyone in. Wow. That's ambitious. If, if Xhaka and party can, you know, not get Highbury squad style red cards aimed at, you know, Taib, Sof, then yeah. So, so we need a striker. Okay, so there's been a lot of people asking, Kev. By the way, thanks, Ty Gunasaurus. Um, we appreciate that very much. Uh, Kev, why don't you sign off with this? Like, people are asking, do you see us signing anyone? And if we do, what or who? Is oh, Calvert-Lewin so really going to leave oh, Everton Oh, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie, what or who? I mean, how could you ask or, me what or who? All right, what's I, that? I, what you, or who? Do I, I, I don't know. Let me just get this straight, people. I don't know. We are linked with also. We're linked with Jonathan David. We're linked with Jovic. We're linked with Calvert Lewin. We're linked with Isaac. Bring any one of them in. I'll be happy. I'll tell you that now. Midfield. We've been linked with Never. We've been linked with uh, uh, Pesuma. We've been linked with this one. That one. Bring any of them in. I'll be happy. Because we need the bodies in. Kev, I have to put this up from Lone Star, otherwise he might have a conniption if I don't ask you again. Because you've made it very clear how you feel about Aubameyang. But I'm going to play the what-if game with you here. If he's fit, if he's shown remorse, if he and Arteta fix their problems, if, 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 do <laughs> you give him another chance? Of course you do. If, if you don't sign anybody and you fix the problems. But Obama hasn't said he's committed to Arsenal. Because before any before the club could even want to bring him back, the player has to want it. If you know Th that's why I'm on, isn't it? I'm on here because I give you the player's perspective. The player has to want it. That's why I'm so adamant that he, Obama Yang hasn't come out and said, I am committed. 
So let me ask you this about the player having to want something. Because Bruno Gomerich, however you pronounce his last name, is uh, is pushing his agent, apparently, to do the deal with Newcastle, it, which is in a relegation fight. And uh, Arsenal are a better Really, better Sophie? Club. Really? Oh, it's money. No, but, but, but really, Sophie? He's pushing his agent to do the Newcastle deal. You know that, do you? Listen, Do you know I don't that? know. I don't know anything. Kim. So, 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 don't say he's pushing his agent to do the new cast. Reports, to do the new cast. Reports, reports indicate. Right. Here's what, okay. Here's what I. Here's what I think. My two cents. My opinion, Mister Campbell, is that his agent could be doing that to push for an Arsenal deal. We don't know. We don't know this. True. But don't tell me exactly, my AK. Money, money, money. Money talks. But it's the club too, Kev, that might not let players go at this juncture. That's half. That's another battle. The player is the first and foremost, but the club. We've seen no, clubs stand in. Look what, Ling look what United have done to Lingard. Who, by the way, I would have taken at Arsenal no, on loan. No, so Sophie, we're, we're, it's two different conversations. We were talking about Aubameyang being reintegrated back into the Arsenal first team. I know I shifted gears. I know, you but you but you can't yeah, but you can't pull that one on me. Oh, if Abamyang if Abamyang's gonna be committed to the football club and we sign nobody, of course he's an asset to what we do that we try and integrate him back. No problem. But if it's a player from the outside coming in, obviously that's different. You, you 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 have to you, you have to try and win both. You have to try and win the club, and you have to try and win a player. Very very difficult, and that's why negotiations sometimes sometimes take a lot longer than the the month that you you get for this transfer window. I mean, we shipped players out pretty quick, and other teams have bought players in. And I I think yes, I know you've said this before about <laughs> business taking a while, Kev. But the Trippier yeah, but deal Sof. happened pretty quickly. The Chris Sofie. Wood deal happened pretty quickly. Sofie. The Coutinho deal happened pretty quickly. Go on, No, Kim. Coutinho, they've been trying to get rid of Coutinho for ages. No, Sofie. Villa haven't been trying to sign Coutinho no, for ages. Uh, no, Barcelona no. have been trying to get rid of him. Exactly. So if a club is trying to get rid of someone and then you see him, for, then you see him available, it's quick to do. That's my point. Supply and demand, Mr. Campbell. Supply and demand. You see, that's my point. So, and where we are, teams know we are desperate. That's another issue, Sophie. Teams yes. know we're desperate. We were losing 1-0, 2-1. Come on, the Gunners. Make it a good week. Let's go. Big game, big game. We'll be talking about that um, in, in the next few days as well. Tobin Heath, um, I understand, started today too. So, uh, brilliant. Okay, Kev, uh, that is it for now. Super Kev talking great as usual. Eh, you know. No, he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, so. Hold on a minute. Let me get my hood on for her. Uh, uh, but she's got a samurai, so I've got... <laughs> No, it's brilliant because, listen, also, people don't realise sometimes, and we've had a show about this where we've done an inside the dressing room, is players, look, Kev, Kev's at Forest. The next thing he knows, he's he's like, oh, you're going to, you've been sold to Trabzon. Trabzon Sport. You know, players get, they got families, they got kids. Some of them don't have, but their family's far away. They're young. You know, there's a lot to take into consideration some some players find it hard to go from south to north and north to south mm -hmm, of England. Of so, you know, it's not easy. We'll be getting stuck into some of this a little bit more tomorrow. Kev also has a couple of refreshing questions for you guys uh, to get stuck into. They love him there, Lone Star. Oh, my gosh. I tell you. If Kev turns up at the Winslow, right, on Mer Merseyside, or he lands in Trabzon, let me, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, Sophie, Trabs on. <laughs> You've seen uh, oh, it's weird. You've seen nothing like it, Sophie. I'm telling you, the, um, the lads who I've done the thing with could not believe it. They just couldn't. I'll play something now, real quick, just for fun, you guys. Let's end it on a fun note. I think this is at the pins. I th actually, let me see where. This Up, up. 
I love it, Kev. Where where was that? That was it. That was, was the it? 12 pins. That was the pins, yeah. yeah. That was the pins, yeah. 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 That was the I don't pins. know why I'm saying where was it. I thought it was the pins and I just wanted you yeah, to confirm it. Was it, the but... pins. it was the pins. Um, After an I... Arsenal win at the, uh, at the, at the Emirates. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, brilliant that stuff. Was nice. Stopping and taking pictures with everyone all the time. One of Kev's traditions, if you're lucky, uh, when he's working at a game, you might find him in the pins afterwards. I know, uh, I, I think that's Gunnar Russ's second home, isn't it, Kev? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I tend to get in trouble when Gunnar Ross shows up and he doesn't get home in time. And I don't know how I get in trouble. Russ, go home! <laughs> Do you know, I don't know why people prefer... Oh, well, look, they're both great, but the pins is so much more fun than the tolly, in my opinion. Well, the tolly's, tolly's a nice pop, especially before the games. Before so the, the game, tolly, yeah. The tolly is a nice one. But I think the pins, because of the proximity of where it is, it's... And it, I'm not saying the Tolleton's far away from Finsbury Park, but 12 pins is right on Finsbury Park Station, at it? So you could get really anywhere you need to. A few beers and then down the tube. Yeah, definitely. Hey, it might be coming to a, a Highbury Squad show near you very soon, talking about Arsenal pubs. There's a good one for you. Right, that's it. That's all we've got. Uh, if you'd like to tune into Lee Judges TV, I am appearing with the judge himself, Dan, and Mr. Tom Canton. I can only imagine how crazy that is going to be. So whiz over there. and uh, I'll if... check you. I'll be watching a little bit of that, I think. <laughs> um, Kev, take us out. We'll be back tomorrow, 8 o'clock, everyone. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Remember, if you haven't hit the like button on the way in, you didn't hit it while you're, uh, you're in the show, do a Vinny and hit it on the way out. We appreciate you. And the squaddies. Even Newman is involved in the love of the squaddies. So look after yourself, everybody. And you know what comes next? At ease, squaddies. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.